Hello again and welcome back to my two-part patio project. The second and final video will focus on the work that was done to build the patio roof. I will keep commentary to a minimum, but all measurements for the posts, beams, and rafters will be included in the description. First thing we decided to do was install the ledger board that will be used to connect the rafters from the house to the beams. Now there are many ways to do this. I've seen some people attach the ledger board directly to the stucco, but it's very difficult to correctly guess or find the locations of the wooden studs. We have decided to cut out 8 inches from the stucco for the 2x6 ledger board and the flashings that will sit under it. Here I am carrying one of the two flashings used to properly waterproof the ledger board and the wall. It's hard to tell but there is already a z-bar flashing behind the stucco and over the black paper. This is why it's important to notch out the space for the ledger board. I really did not want to cut such a big opening but this is the correct way to do this. The ledger board is then secured to the wooden studs of the house. These studs will typically be 16 inches on center. The height of the ledger board was determined by measuring the height of the fascia board of the house. If I go too high, I will need to notch out the fascia board and possibly a roof tile. The bottom of my ledger board is 8 feet and 3 inches off the concrete floor. I then start to place the post base. I have primed them to add another layer of protection, even though they are galvanized. I measured the outside ones and then used a string to help me align the two in the middle. A 5 8 anchor was buried in the concrete when it was poured. Next, we begin to cut the posts to the height needed. The posts are roughly 85 inches tall, which is seven feet and one inch. Just like the bases, we put the first two outside and pull a string to help level the middle two. We help balance the post with the two by fours that was used for the concrete forms. This will prevent them from tipping over and just make it easier to install the beams and the rafters later on. I also just want to take a moment to point out how the sun is completely hitting this side of the house. It was difficult to come outside and enjoy the backyard without any shade. I am placing the post caps where the beams will sit and be anchored together with the posts. The middle beam is a 4x8 and 10 feet long. The posts are 10 feet apart on center. The outside beams are 12 feet long. I decided to leave them in their full length size just in case I want to do something with them in the future.
With the posts and beams in place, we start working on the rafters by preparing the hangers. The rafter hangers are placed 24 inches on center. I am using 2x6s for rafters and this was the recommended schedule from my city. The rafters will span 10 feet from the ledger or to the beams. We try many methods to get the rafter straight and square, but the 4x8 OSB boards ultimately determine the placement of the rafters. This one video is slightly out of order, but I wanted to show you how we prepare the rafters for the fascia board. The outer rafter boards, which are also the fascia boards, are cut at a 45 degree and a string is pulled between them to help mark the rest of the rafters to cut them. The fascia boards are 2 by 8. Here is a shot of these brackets used to help keep the boards even and support them in the middle. The rafters were aligned as we began to nail down the boards. Sometimes you will need to slightly shift them even though they were properly square to compensate for any unevenness of the house wall. With the boards nailed down, the fascia can now be attached. We waited to do this after so we could clamp down the boards to the fascia to get a very precise fit. Check out this corner my dad worked on. With the fascia attached, I began to work on the spacer that will separate the edge drip from the fascia. This will help keep water off the fascia board as it runs down the roof. We are using self-adhering roofing rolls. According to the manufacturer, this material can be installed directly over the boards. We use a chalk line to cut the first roll so that the top material will not overlap together. This material can be easy to work with so long as you take your time pulling the plastic sheet underneath once this plastic film touches the sticky backside, it is a huge pain to remove. Before we can put down the cap sheet, we need to install the edge strip. I've seen people add a ton of nails to this, and that is probably what you should do. But 12 inches on center is all this is getting. My dad helped me make these cuts to fold the edge around the fascia board.
Finally, we are ready for the cap sheet and the final step for this roof. Again, pull evenly on the plastic film or this stuff will get stuck. It is near impossible and irreversible any mistake done here when removing the plastic film. These rolls are joined for life. We struggled to get the last piece underneath the flashing and honestly I think it would have been okay and maybe even correct way if we put the cap sheet on top of the flashing because these membranes are waterproof and the risk of water going behind the membrane is very low but I thought it would work better if the cap sheet was underneath the flashing. Also I feel it's very important to show just how the flashing was done. I had so many questions about this and I saw many people just butting up the flashing to the wall and using caulk to seal it. But here in Arizona with 110 degree summers, that caulking would have split open and separated very quickly. The proper way to do this is to use this Z flashing which will go behind the stucco, the foam and paper and then add this regular L flashing below it to counter flash making the roof waterproof. Thank you so much guys if you have seen both part one and have made it through this video. This patio is just the beginning to what we want to do. I ask that you please like the video and subscribe to see what we take on next.